manifesting my victory in Christ Jesus. Manifesting my victory in Christ Jesus. That was where we started yesterday. Hallelujah. We started with 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. Where you were taught, were taught that every one of us uh, have a winning destiny. And that we must approach life with a winning mentality. That's what we were taught yesterday. We must approach life. We must approach everything we do with what? A winning mentality. Now, don't approach life the way life approaches you. You know, the way that life approaches you, I mean. Life can approach you in a very hard way. But when you ap approach life with a winning mentality, you see yourself winning. Then I said yesterday uh, that since we are given a winning destiny as children of God, why then do several children of God still suffer defeat? Why then do they say experience defeat? Children of God experiencing defeat in several aspects of life. And I told us clearly from Hosea 4.6 that God's children suffer defeat because of lack of knowledge. That no matter how born again you are, if you lack knowledge, you will experience destruction in one way or the other. Now, and we saw it clearly from God's word, Hosea forces, my people are destroyed because they lack. And I told us that the, word, the words, my people, talks about God's own people. Now, somebody will say, ah, why am I now born again if I still have to suffer destruction? It shows you that being born again it, uh, 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 brings you onto the path of victory. But knowledge is what gives you access into that victory. Now, and yesterday we started talking about the knowledge we need to have. I said, number one, you need to have knowledge of who you are in Christ. We talked about that yesterday where I showed you from Galatians chapter uh, 3 verse 26 that you are God's son by faith in Christ. It's not that God got anybody pregnant to give back to you. But the moment you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior by faith, you became his sons. Then we went further to say, what is your commitment to God? We saw Job 1.8 that God's expectation from us is that we should make him proud. We should do the things, live our life in such a way that glory will come to him, not shame. And we saw that from Job chapter 1 verse 8. We now ask, answered another question. What is God's commitment towards us? We saw the Lord's prayer and we saw give us this their daily bread. That God's commitment towards his faithful children is what? Number one, provision. If you are faithful to God, you cannot lack. He will provide the idea you need. He will provide the connection you need. He will provide the resources you need. Your own is to be faithful. His own is to what? Provide. We also saw from the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation. That the second thing that God is committed to doing for you is to give you guidance. It is God's responsibility. That's why the Bible says the steps of the just man are being ordered by God. Now, and I told us, I said, so many Christians, we live our life not wanting to wait for divine direction. And when, if God sees that you know so much, you don't want to ask him for direction, he keeps quiet. He might show you sickness, but most people don't pay attention. That's why they eventually suffer defeat. And we saw the third commitment of God towards man, uh, deliver us from evil. That means protection. God's com commitment towards us is to what? Protect us, to make sure that no harm comes to us. So today we are looking at another not thing you need to have knowledge of. Today we are looking at knowledge of who your enemy is, how he operates, and your weapon of warfare against him. Write it down that way. That's the knowledge you need to know, uh, you need to have. Knowledge of who your enemy is, how he operates, and your weapon of warfare against him. Listen, if you don't have the understanding of this, you can still suffer defeat. You know, he has promised us victory, but if you don't have the knowledge of who your enemy is, how your enemy operates, and the weapon of warfare that you should use against him, you might still suffer defeat. 
You know, I was, I was watching a program uh, uh, before I came up this evening, and uh, it was online. A pastor that, you know, I just, he's a young pastor just coming up. You know, a coming up pastor, a young pastor that is coming up. He's supposed to clock 50 in about a week time. He died at the age of 49. A very flourishing, powerful church died of cardiac arrest. So I was watching, I watched uh, a documentary being done by a medical doctor. You know, this pastor had the experience of the cardiac arrest coming. He was to have a ministration. He felt all the signs, but he was applying faith. Now, and God also tried to save him. He wanted to go. His car did not function. The car didn't work. He looked for another means to go. He got to the place of ministration. He could not stand. They gave him a seat. He ministered for like three minutes, talked to his PA, and lifted his head and died. Now, this doctor was now comparing between him, him and an 82-year-old pastor, that is uh, John H. Hagi. Now, they had the same experience, but he sought for medical attention on time, and he was able to still remain alive, preaching the same gospel till now. So, while one died of ignorance at 49, another one survived by wisdom. You know, that's why, see, these four days is loaded. I didn't even know that I would watch that CD before I started preparing all this. God just put it in my mind that these four days teach my people on how to live a victorious life in Christ. You know, you can have a, few, a glorious destiny and not fulfill it. I always tell us, nothing in this life is automatic. Hello? Everything in this life sits on principles. If you don't find those principles, you will only be hearing vision. Ah, one lo maga. Ah, one lo adinla. One 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 thing of my wallet. It will not be your portion. So let's start. Who is your enemy? First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Now, those of you at the media, I will need you to be very swift today. We are going to read a whole lot of scriptures. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Who is the enemy of the Christian? Tani or ta in young. Who is your enemy as a Christian? Tal or ta or Now let's look at it. First Peter chapter 5, not first John. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Now pay attention to scriptures. You know, the Bible is God's word. For us. Now look at it. He said, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, what's the name? The devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Your, your enemy, the devil. Your enemy, the, the listen, the enemy of everyone is not a human being. Your enemy is the devil, Satan. S a T A N. That is your enemy. Your enemy is not any human being around. I've taught you these things some years ago when we we're teaching about prayer. Now I told us that see, the devil could use anybody as a channel. If you pray for that person to die, the spirit of the devil that possessed him to attack you will leave that dead person and enter into another person to continue the operation. That's why you must not get it wrong. You must not be distracted with the tricks of the devil to begin to nurse the feeling that your enemy is one human being somewhere. Our enemy is Satan. I come again. We are clearly shown here that our real enemy is the devil. Is the devil, the fallen angel. Hallelujah. Now, listen, you know why? He made up his mind. Show me on screen. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. He was an angel in heaven. But when he misbehaved against God, he was casted down to the earth. Revelation 12, 9. And when he came to the earth, funny enough, God had given man the earth. The earth that God created, he gave to man. And the devil was already there. Look at it. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with what? With him. That's the enemy. He's the one that entered into a maker's mother to use him against you. He's the one that entered into uh, 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 that Bukwara man, what's his name again? Shekau. To fight nine. It's not, 
She, she cow himself cannot just stand up and say, I'm going to fight a jihadist. No, it is the devil that is the arch enemy. And the devil does not want us to understand that he's the enemy. I will tell you why as we go on. Let's confirm with more scriptures. Look at First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18. Acts chapter 5, verse 3. John chapter 13, verse 27. All these scriptures, we'll look at them one after the other. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. Let's confirm more. We have a lot of teachings to do these four days. It's a teaching uh, uh, program. Now, 1 Thessalonians 2, 18, look at this. He said, therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again. But what happened? But Satan hindered us. Did Paul see Satan? No. Satan used some men, but Paul didn't want to be distracted. He didn't say it was, it was, it was Herodian. He didn't say it was, it was Pharaoh. No, he said Satan. Though I know that Satan does not have human hands. Physical hands. He does not have a physical body. But anytime I see him or pray through anybody, I don't want to see that person. It is the devil. Hallelujah. So Paul is saying categorically, Satan hinders us, showing us as that Satan is the real enemy. Acts chapter 5, verse 3. Then we look at John 13, 27. Acts chapter 5 and verse 3. Show me fast. We have, we have a lot of the, uh, scriptures to say, look at this. And Peter said, Ananias, why have what? Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? Can you see that even Peter knew? He didn't say, ah, ah, Ananias, so she was you to buy. Ah, ah, he wrote, she was buy. She was to tell you, Ananias, but he said, ah, Satan has, he, he knows that it is the oppression of the devil. And he was focused at the devil. Now, one more scripture. John chapter 13 and verse 27. I know somebody will be saying, but pastor, in the next scripture, next verse you did not read, and Anians died. He died, yes. But was it Peter that prayed for him to die? No. It was judgment from the hands of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let's go. John chapter 13 verse 27, 27, 13, 27, 13, 27, John 13 verse 27, hallelujah. Now look at this, now after the piece of bread, what happened? Satan entered him, entered with Judas, then Jesus said, what you do, do quickly. Can you see? The, the enemy of everyone that is a Christian, is who? Is Satan. Don't be deceived to believe that anybody around you is your enemy. Now, yes, those people could be channels. Now, let's read on. So that, Let me take my notes so that we can understand. When you see it this way, hear me, you will not fall into the devil's trap through what? Hatred and malice. Now, when you see it this way, you will not fall into the devil's trap through hatred and malice. You know what the devil wants to do? He wants you to begin to see humans as your enemies. Do you know what he wants to achieve? He wants you to hate somebody. And listen, if you, if you harbor hatred in your heart, God cannot answer your prayer. The devil wants you to harbor hatred and the devil wants you to keep malice. Imagine, do you know that there's what we call holy, holy malice in church today? Christians are keeping malice in the name of spiritual warfare. That's why you should ask, with all your fall and die prayer, how many people have died? That's why you say that we pray more and don't have results. They get less results. Because in the innermost part of the heart, what the devil wants to achieve is already achieving. And what is that? He wants you to hate somebody and he wants you to keep malice with somebody. There are so many Christian sisters that sees their mother-in-law as witches and they don't visit them. They don't talk to them. They don't have any relationship with them. I was also deceived into that realm. I remember we were told when we were growing up, ah, ah, our grandmother, from, that's from my father's side, he's a witch, oh, a genie, oh, a genie, mama, oh, a genie, oh. A genie. So anytime we go home to greet my dad, we don't go to her. My dad will say, Pastor, Toba Tinlo, Yakoki, Mama Minsaleo, Kotomalo, Mani Motikbosa. While I'm going to say, Luma Kiyache. 
I'll be saying it in my talo maki aje. Olo maje. Pastor, oya fun mama lo an motigbo ki fun won lo kon wa lo de mi mo spiritual angu. But let him batima mama ku ogun to ogun ti mo rogo ma se o se o. God now started showing me nobody no listen no man is big enough to stop you. If God decide to move no man is big enough to stop you. Yes, the devil can use them, can possess them against you, but don't let the devil drag you into the trap of you hating or keeping malice with them. Hello. Now, then in that case, somebody will ask, there's a question I ask, how then, pastor, will I handle these human enemies? Now, these people that the devil has possessed to use against me, how then can I handle them? Pastor, how can I handle their case? Will I be looking at them? If I want to pray, what do I pray? If you are to pray, just pray that Lord, just have your way. Lord, intervene in my matter. He knows the best way to intervene. Look at when the Bible says in John 12, I mean Acts 12, the church prayed when Peter was arrested. The church only prayed. Church prayed. We were not told that the church said, Ah, Herod, die, die. If it is today, we'll be praying, Herod should die. But the church was just praying. Father intervened. Lord, come into the case of Peter. An angel went to the prison and delivered Peter. In the next chapter, Herod went to a meeting and started talking. And he was proud against God. And my God ate him alive. Don't ever be deceived into believing that any human being is the enemy. They are channels. Now, and if you discover that anybody is a, human, a demonic channel towards you, hear me. The best thing to do is to be careful with that person. Don't keep malice, but be careful. Hello? Don't open your defense. Anytime that person is around you or you're around that person, just make sure you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. If the Spirit of God is saying, don't eat their food, don't eat their food. If the Spirit of God is saying, don't wear their clothes, don't wear their clothes. If the Spirit of God is saying, keep a distance, keep a distance, but make sure that your heart is pure. Why? So that the devil will not trap you into that realm of what? Unforgiveness. That's malice and hatred. Now, you know what the devil wants to achieve with it? He wants to use it to hinder your prayers. If there's anybody you are holding down your heart, may God have mercy on you. And may God give you the grace to let them loose. So, who is your enemy? Your enemy is the devil. Don't lose your focus. Your enemy is not Mama Shadia. Your enemy is not your grandmother. Your enemy is not your mother-in-law. They could be channels. And like I said, the devil will always use every available channel. The same thing as God. When God wants to speak to you, he uses any available channel. I remember I, I, after one of our radio programs, a young man called me. He was about to, he said, according to him, he said he wanted to hang himself. And that radio was placed at that channel. And I started preaching. And I was preaching the message of hope. He came down from the ropes, listened to the message, and called me after that he wants to give his life to Christ. Another one too, an armed robber. He robbed. People noticed it was, it was him. So he left that area, went to another place. That night he was just thinking about his life. That I can't go back again to the place where they have known him as an armed robber. If they catch him, they are going to kill him. Is he going to continue like this? He said that same night was the night when I was preaching on radio. He just called me and told me, sir, can I come and see you tomorrow? I said, come ahead. Come. So when he came, he told me his story. I led him to Christ. That man is an Okada man till this morning. Praise the Lord. Did you learn something? Let's go to the next point. How does the devil operate? You know why you need to know how he operates? If you don't know how he operates, he will rob you Without knowing, without you knowing. You need to understand their operational system. You need to understand, I come again, understand their operational, bow, not shame, operate. You need to know how they operate so that you can guide yourself. Now, in the area where we live, we used to hear in this area, people say, ah, I'm robber. There was a time we came here one day and they were telling us that robbers came to their street, to the street beside us here. And they went from house to house, collecting phones, that they even went with POS, transferring cash. 
bring your item, they transfer. If such people come to the area where I live, they will die before they get to the second gate. So, the robbers of our own place is not in the night. Their own is in the afternoon. When everybody has gone to work. They'll be walking around looking as if they are picking waste, uh, waste products. Before you know it, they enter into people's houses. You just hear that people will come back in the night. You say, ah, generator is low. Ah, the generator is low. Some will say, ah, plasma is low. LED is low. And things like that. Hello, am I communicating? So, since the people of our area now had this understanding, you know what they did? They now decided to employ a uh, 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 watch, uh, watch, do we call the afternoon uh, watch? Yes, or whatever. Uh, you know, uh, these vigilante people, but they work in the afternoon and during the day. They are well dressed, you won't know. They will just be moving from street to street, looking around, looking around. If you try to corner anywhere, you just hear, stop. If you move, they shoot you. Why? Because the people study the terrain. They understand how these people operate. As a child of God, you need to understand the operational system of your enemy, the devil. Now, let's look at his operational system. Hallelujah. Now, in his operations, he uses, put this one in Roman figure, he uses four tools to rob people. Number one is sin. Cherry, okay, let me speak it in English. Wherever he finds sin, he finds a clear entrance. The devil strategy, no, that's the foundation for robbing people, for carrying out his, his attack, is sin. Now look at what happened to the case of David. When he committed sexual immorality with Bathsheba, the devil entered his family. This is a man that has used all his life to fight battles. Never lost one battle. But the devil was able to enter when he saw that there was a crack on the wall. Sin is a tool in the hands of the devil. It is like a master key. That's why you must not allow him. That's why, listen to me, at times when he wants to operate in the life of a Christian, you know what he will do? He will throw to you a sinful opportunity. And funny. Our fear she see what you are. Yeah, ma okay. Ah, she ma was opportunity inuni. She ma was opportunity inuni. Oh, the leg ba opportunity yeh to ba de she. Chori she to koko ju see what you yeh. Oh, fe fi she leg kuni. The moment you allow sin, hear me. The door will open, and you never can tell what is coming to do. Show me this scripture. Look at Proverbs chapter fourteen and verse thirty-four, and we're also going to look at Genesis four seven. Proverbs chapter fourteen. And verse 34, it talks about righteousness exalts a nation. Please give us on screen. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34. Look at that. Righteousness exalts a nation. But look at it is clear. But sin is what? It's a reproach. To any people. If the devil is going around you, around you, he's trying. How can how can I attack? How can I attack? How can I attack? How can I attack? He does not see anything. How can I attack? He does not see anything. You know what he will do? He will throw a sinful opportunity at you to see if you will open that door. That was the same thing that God said to Cain in Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. He says, Sin is at your door. Genesis 4 7. Sin is at your Look at it. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, look at sin lies at your door. And its desire is for you. But you know what God said? You should what? Rule over it. Which means God is saying you have the power to, not, to decide not to sin. That's why if, you are, if there's anything that, that is a prayer around you to commit sin, understand that it is the devil looking for an entrance route. Today I was in a meeting and my mentor was sharing one experience. 
And I said in my heart, I'm going to use it and add it to as illustration example for you. He was telling us about a couple in their church. They were trusting God for the fruit of the womb. One would you alone for more? Lord, when will you answer us? Lord, when will you answer us? Lord, when will you answer us? And he said they were praying seriously. He too was always fasting and praying for them. Lord, please answer this couple. Like I have so many people in our church who I'm praying like that for. He said, but there's one, this sister in their church, you know, uh, this sister in their church, there is a nurse. She now came and said to him one day, Papa, Papa, in the hospital where I work, I saw Brother Lagbaja brought a lady for abortion. Ah. So my mentor said, he now took time to investigate, not knowing that while that family was trusting God for the fruit of the womb, the church was praying for them, the man was impregnating ladies outside, and because he does not want his wife to know, he was aborting for them. They say he has done six. My mentor said, he now said, no wonder. We have been fasting and praying. It's like God did not hear us. What is going on? So he said, he confronted the man. In fact, because of that, the lady was sacked from the hospital. Because what she did is not professional. So, the lady was sacked. The man angrily, you know, he put up angry, angry bad nature. Wanted to leave church. But, you know, he didn't want to leave. He left. But the wife was still coming to church. The wife, the husband now told the wife, that see, you are just wasting your time. There, has, there is one place at Ife. Let's go to that land. They will give us children. He said, so when they go to that land, hear me? The place they went, they gave them one concussion to eat. The wife later said, it, uh, you know, they ate the concussion and got pregnant that month. Now, my mentor said they didn't know that that was where they got baby from. As the baby was shooting out, he came to the church and said, praise God, our prayer over so-so and so family has been answered. You know, praise God. You know, members, I fear you. Praise God. Our mama shared testimony. Our mama Joe. Ah, name okay. I do our kolomu testimony. Wa. Ah, praise God. He said, but what shocked them was the woman delivered a bouncing baby boy. On the day they were to name the child, all of them were preparing to go for the naming. The child died. My mentor said, you know how we pastors used to do. When things happen to the members, we blame ourselves. He was crying, Lord, this is not what you told me. Lord, Lord, Lord. It was the Lord, Lord, Lord that God said to you, you better go and ask the woman. They now went to ask the woman. The woman now told them where they went. They now went to investigate. They said the place where they went to, the person said they were supposed to bring the baby the third day after delivery for them to give the baby name. And since they did not fulfill their vow, they took their baby back. We thought that was the end of the story. Six months after that, the death of that baby, the woman died. Six months after the woman died, the man also died. Can you see that? All what the devil was looking for all the way was what? An entry point. Entry point. He cannot operate freely without it. That is the foundation of the success of any of his operations. See here. So that's the first one. It's four he uses. What's the first one again? Sin. That was why the devil threw that opportunity to Joseph. Potiphar's wife opportunity. Don't worry. I will take care of you. Joseph, just come and sleep with me. But Joseph knew better. He said, will I do this thing and sin against God? You know what Joseph meant? If I sin against God, the devil will gain access freely. I will now become his meat. Let's look at number two. I'm rushing because of time. I have 15 minutes more. Number two, another tool that the devil uses to operate is what I call fear. I wrote it down this way. Fear makes the devil flow the same way 
fish flows in water. Now, what is fear? Fear is the opposite of faith. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. What is fear? The simple definition I want to give fear now is to doubt the ability of God. That's fear. Fear is doubting the ability of your God. Now, I, I used to think it was a, uh, uh, an attack that brought Job down. I didn't know that the first thing the devil threw to Job was fear. Show us Job chapter 3 and verse 25. Job chapter 3 and verse 25. All the while that Job was relating with God, there was fear in his heart that one day he will fall. Ah, are you sure that this thing will not finish one day? That was what Job was not saying. Yeah. Hmm. Eh. Kuma sing kanto loti chi. Kodun kopo kope. Ulu alon fufuni. But kanto to da oke nkpe. Who told you? That was what Job was saying. Show me now. Job chapter 3 verse 25. I want everyone to see. He was always nursing the fear of one day. Look at this. For the thing I what? I greatly feared has come upon me. And what I dreaded has happened to me. She was NLT. Ah, Job is saying, which means You know, I used to think, some people used to think, chicken like Angelina, Don't think like that. The Bible says the part of the just is as a shining light that shineth how? Brighter and brighter. Now look at NLT. He said, what I always feared has what? Has happened to me. What I dreaded has come true. What I always feared. Why will you be always thinking that your child may die one day? One of my pastor friends, only pastor friends, she had more to say, be more to so at least it's a pastor what does it mean Let's see whether the message Bible will bring it, break it more again. I want it to make sense. Fear. That's why I see. Anytime the devil wants to operate, he will create a fearful atmosphere so that he can put a hole in your heart. Okay? Hmm. This one says, the worst of my fears has come true. What I have dreaded most has happened. You are building your business and you are always thinking, are you sure this business will not collapse? I'm afraid though, the way this thing is going, is it real? That's why, if you ask Brother Peter, he will tell you, I walk upon the CEO until I started nursing fear when I saw the storm. You know what I want to tell you, all children of God that are here? Don't put yourself in an environment where Fearful things is being spread. Don't put yourself in such an environment. They don't talk about good news. You know, there are some churches like that. To make you pray, they will be telling you about bad news. You are now praying out of fear. It is the devil that, that, sorry, it is the devil that makes a fearful post into our minds. Our mind is like an open field. And how does the devil make this fearful post? He will make people around to be saying the things that you will not and become afraid. We met, we met a lady and my wife and we have been trying to counsel her, but she was counseling. She thinks she's just thinking she will die. So I don't know what is happening to me. I feel so tired. I feel this. I feel like something's here. I feel that something's here. I feel that something's here. We cancel her. I told her my experience. 
I said, where well, my own started when I went to begin to read one book on sickness. Somebody, is one of our pastors that bought the book. He talked about sicknesses and their symptoms. I left the Bible. I started reading sicknesses and symptoms. You don't know that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The Bible is right. I read that book for one year. After one year, I was sick for three years. Not that nobody diagnosed me as a sick person, oh, but I was now feeling the symptom of every disease I've read, even HIV. <laughs> Beloved, it got to a point. I began to do self medication. If I go to this hospital, uh, this uh, pharmacy, I'll say, I don't know, I just have this joint pain, give me, I drank calcium like. It got to a point, eh, I. I started chewing Ciprota. You know what they call Ciprota? Augmenting. High level of uh, antibiotics. I don't use water to take it again. If I touch this place, I'll feel pain. I say, it's my kidney. If even I'm in Mundaiguna, it's, it's my kidney. If I touch this place, I'll feel pain. I say, ah, appendicitis. Momo Ciprota, they be pain. Matuma Momo Ciprota, no fasting. So one day, I now ask myself, how many sickness do I now have? Because all the symptoms in all the books, of all the names of the sicknesses there, is connected in one way or the other. You feel dizzy. You feel pain in some, you know. I just took the first thing. The day I was to be, after three years of going from, he got to a point, a doctor friend had to tell me, Pastor, I said, Sir, Pastor, I said, don't come to this hospital again. Maybe you are a pastor. What are you doing here? We have given you all the injections. We have given you all treatment. We have done no, no, no prescription. You will still come again. That's how you are feeling this side. You are feeling this side. Pastor, don't come again. So I now went back home. And where I live that time, there's no place I could burn any book. I got a bomb vita, uh, a tin of empty tin of bomb vita, put the book inside. And I told the book, you are the source of my problem. Now I know you are the source of my problem. I set it on fire. It burnt and I threw it away. You know what I next started doing? I now started studying scriptures. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. I, I, I ate scriptures not knowing that what happened to me will still later happen to my wife. Because in our, in our, you know, some of you don't understand that to be a pastor is not easy. There are, there are, there's a level you get to, you listen to people's case. You will see your case in their case and you don't have their case. You begin to feel what they are, they are feeling and you don't have their sickness. I didn't know that she too was going from chemist to chemist, pharmacy to pharmacy, hospital to hospital. You know how I brought her out of it? I started writing scriptures for her. I started counseling her. She too came out of it. We now saw this lady. You know, uh, I told my wife, Jekha Fisile. You send me say to us, um, now I'm on my way to UCH for comprehensive. Uh, I said, leave her. She has to complete the class. By the time she goes around, you have to get to a point that you know how, how me I was delivered? I read the Bible to a point. I now said to myself, wait, Prince Wee, if you die now, is it not even you are going? I say, yes. Why am I now afraid of death? It's fear of death that is making me going about. Satan, if I want to die, I want to die safe. <laughs> eh? I want to I want to die safe. I want to I want to die safe. Because Satan doesn't want you to go to heaven. And if you know that if you die now, you will make heaven. So Satan cannot be using death to chase you. But he wants to keep you in fear. And just like that scripture, anything you are always afraid of, if you don't stop it, will eventually happen. If you are always afraid that, hey, hey, who knows whether my husband will not leave me around one day, he will not know. 
Who knows whether this marriage thing will work. It will not work. Kill that fear. And how do you kill that fear? Go and get married to the Bible. Read it at least three times a day. Anything you know that feeds your fear, stop listening to them. You know those Iri Aye? You say, ah. It's not my mother and solo. I need a party and say. Oh, party and say. A work body level, a rabbit's in the buying. A book where you must stop. May the Lord heal your heart from fear. Let's move on. I just need to stop. Ah, we have the time. Okay, let's take the three and four. Then we'll stop there. Tomorrow we'll start talking about our uh, 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 your weapon of warfare against him. Number three. Pay attention to this number three. The devil also uses what we call ignorance. I wrote here, ignorance is what makes the devil's uh, uh, sorry, the, that is what makes the devil operate unchallenged in anybody's life. Ignorance, I need more. And when you mean shake, go for knowledge. The devil like any Christian that does not know. I wrote here, the reason is because you won't even know when you have being robbed. If you don't know, you won't know when he will rob you. Give yourself to knowledge. One of the tools that the devil used to operate is ignorance. You know, at times, I laugh when I see some so-called Christians being deceived by false prophets. They will tell them some visions and you'll be shocked. Ah, in Russia, long know that's for you. A pastor told another man's wife, a woman that is married legally, married in church, and married culturally. And the pastor looked at her and said, the reason why there is no children, no child among the both of you is because from above, God said you are not meant for each other. Okay, pastor, who is now the man that God has chosen for me? The pastor told the woman that God said, you are my wife. And pastor is married with five children. Pastor, he now asked Pastor, but what about your wife? He said, God said to me that the woman that gave birth to children for me, that we call my wife, is not the one that he has destined for me in destiny. And this lady, in the name of God, says, went to tell the husband, God said, he didn't join us together. That's why there is no child in our, uh, in our marriage. God said, the husband followed her to the pastor. And the pastor told the husband the same thing and told the husband that there's a lady in our church that God said is your wife. And he brought to agree. So, pastor said, don't worry, I will link you with the lady. So, pastor and this brother's wife was preparing for marriage wedding. That was when I had. Church, one, church member one, his sister, no. When the, the brother came to tell me, ha, ah, Pastor, Muni, eh? And see me, my wedding. Okay, look, Pastor, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, flat, three bedroom flats, no, ba. Want to furnish it. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Then we sat down with the word. I sat with her one on one with the word of God. You know, at times, when I think of some things I've done, I wonder why I'm still alive. That pastor hates me like mad today. I didn't know that they were inviting me to preach in their church that time. Because I was going there to preach in their convention, going there to preach in their program. They put me and they give me good honorarium. They were trying to buy me over. I didn't know. Katie Papa Batikba. Emil them, okay? <laughs> ah, church, church. So when I went to her, we opened the Bible together. Where is it written? As I was showing her the Bible, she asked the Bible, but she does not know these things. 
See, all this, or alone, one way, 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 one Ko she a sharu lurie kule wole. Ah, what did God tell Joshua in Joshua 1a? This book of law shall not depart from your mouth. You must meditate. Day and night. So my sister, that our sister was now looking at me. Hey, Papa. Oh, no, Mulu, I know Babu. Ah, Munisha wants it by insu. Munira koti, the bati, your mag be. Beauty mummy, loba, father in the Lord, where father in the Lord, near so long for Ossi. Muni father in the Lord, Robada look and wonder, Reverend Labaja, the father in the Lord. To back bow look on your massa. Where is your husband? He says, sir, ah, we've separate fed. I say, you know what? Go and look for him. As we finished, she went to her husband. Got to the husband's office. The husband saw her. He burst into she, he burst into tears. She saw her husband. She burst into tears. And they hugged themselves. They cried together. Cry together. And that was where they settled. Pastor disappear. What is what's that? Ignorance. It is ignorance. Hear me. For you to be sick and you are saying, but you so good. It's ignorance. Where is it in the Bible that you should not use drugs? Don't understand that Luke was a medical doctor in the Bible. The man that wrote the book of Luke and he also wrote the book of Acts of the Apostles. Only call. He was a medical doctor. But ignorance. I know there are churches, they will tell you, we don't share anything that is not a testimony on our pulpit. But when you ask, please, where is Reverend Lagbaja? Ah, we are very him since four months ago. They won't tell you on the pulpit. But we don't share it. We only share weddings on the pulpit. But they just say, Praise the Lord. We just want to let you know that Reverend James is, has gone to be with the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. What made him to gone to be with the Lord at that age? Some is stress. God, God, there is a spirit that does not have human body. You know, human body is limited. He worked for only six days. He worked for one day. Ign say ignorance. Ignorance is one of the tools of the devil. If you find out why our marriage is scattering, it's ignorance. I was telling one of our ministers whose marriage broke off recently. I told him, I said, but did I not tell you? When you want to take a job and you were traveling, I asked you, did you ask your wife's opinion? He says, sir, is it no money that is more important than sitting down with my wife? I said, but you, you know that it was that, that time that your wife, another man came to sit down and started talking with her. He says, sir, now I'm back to my senses. It's late. Now that you are back, you better begin to pray. Ignorance. It is ignorance that makes you to be, you wake up in the morning, you are saying, dollar, dollar, pounds. Look at me. See, he who must not walk, the Bible says, let him not eat. That's why in our church, we don't do afternoon prayer. That we not all of you, oh yeah, leave your place of all. Oh yeah, uh, 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 I'm telling you the truth. Ignorance has destroyed several lives. So many of us are misunderstanding activities with spirituality. The rates tell me if you watch church, Muman be low, she fed the pastor. And you are kidney shaying. 
Wawalaro, wawaloson, wawanrole, watumwalale. Mambi lo wan, she fe di pastor ni. And you know one thing, whenever the, wherever the devil sees ignorance, Kai, he capitalizes on it. That's why I don't want to be a pastor that will deceive anybody. I'm telling you, I'll keep saying it. I don't want to be a pastor that will deceive anybody. I want to teach you the truth of God's word so that the devil cannot find any hiding place around your life. Now, don't forget what I said. Ignorance is what, is what makes the devil operate unchallenged. Let's take the last one so that we can close. I've exceeded my time. The fourth tool of the devil is what I call carelessness. Now, I went to the dictionary to get a good meaning that will help us. Now, the Oxford Dictionary says, carelessness is not giving sufficient attention or thought, especially concerning the avoidance of harm or mistake. I'll come again. Not giving sufficient attention or thought, especially concerning the avoidance of harm or mistake. Hello, me, King Ro. You are just so carefree. You have a grown-up house app that is a female. And you are saying, oh, my husband is spiritual. I don't see what happened. That's carelessness, you know. I was teaching my children of recent. I say, see, you know one of the reasons why I always tell you, my children, that you pick males as your friends. Anytime I'm teaching them that, they'll be looking at me and they'll be laughing. They'll be looking at their mommy. I say, see, a woman's body it's like a magnet that steers up the man. I say, anytime you are relating with any man, be looking at below their waist. I say, be looking at it. It will show that something is happening. A man can see and his body will start moving. And you are there. You have not even satisfied your husband. You now want to bring out self. Matured. And my husband is spiritual. Nothing will happen. You are being careless. Like I said, I'm saying it again. The devil capital, he uses, I, no, this is why I said, I said, I used to say it. I said, the devil is not strong. The devil is not swift. What he does is to capitalize on the careless openings we create for him. That's what he does. Careless opening. I remember we used to have a brother in our church. I employed him to work with me in the company where I was working. And uh, we do, we make money every day. So I went to buy this small save. We call it Kolo. Every day we go out to the market and come back. I make some money. I put it inside my safe in the office. And I told him, brother, you two can be doing the same. Old. Thinking that we are both Christians, you know. He's a, he's a prayer coordinator of our church. Brother Harrison. I want you to feed it for you, Megolo. If I tell you, she met a quick Tima, she called me. Pepper, ni Mobande. If I tell you, Nicola de Jomo, come on, so we see Kulu. If I tell you, Nicola Jomo, we see Kuluwa. I say, be more saying, you see, on your own yapi pa on face. So every day, they may be Kulu, you might go by. I know what I was saving for. I was saving for Christmas. Now, let me share this with you so that some of you can learn. At the early stage of my life, my dad was, not, was, not, was an accept, accept, I absentee dad and to support my mom. So I saved. I was saving towards that Christmas to buy, rice, buy chicken, buy all the things that they, my younger ones will use for Christmas. That was what I was saving for. But mo e de mo man difficult lati si asha fa 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 mo sha le golo fe ma lo si ta e ma lo si ta e ni e wo so that ke ti e mo te ba ri ye ti mo save 
only encourage you know, brother Harrison. Lati ma say. O sha fe lo mun brother Harry duro. Mo ba si. I cried that day. Mo ba fi si won, brother. Chun ro ni ke ba ba yi mi tedi. Do you know why? I was careless. Jesus said, watch and he didn't say pray and pray. For one year. Could they ring on console? Me live up, me live no. Me live ja. Okay. Brother Prince, we are German bin. Bow will let you a German bin. I come and you a German bin. I don't know whether that something like that has happened to you before. Eh, mama, wow, we love you, you can listen. Eh, ma, we can't move this phone. You, you, what? Please leave this company. Leave, leave. I don't want to see. I don't want to see even in the church. I don't want to see you again. Hello, no. I could come. Remember, what to my brother? I buy me in the no. Eh, my daddy, she won none. Hear me. Even if you employ your pastor to work as your accountant, don't close your eyes. I have seen great people fall under the influence of the power of money. You'll be making a big mistake if you put your business in charge of a person because of his spirituality and not be checking account. Hear me. Don't be careless. Everybody is human. Don't be so careless to the point you now say, this everybody say, ah, it's nice, it's nice. See, I develop a, a philosophy. I just want to tell you this. Any money that I cannot give, I don't borrow. If I cannot give you, I will not borrow you. Do you know why? The heart of man is so desperate that if they try to refund, they can't get it to refund. They might think of harming you. So I form it as my own policy. Oh, Timbale for him, Yeah, Timbale, Shijukro. Because the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Sir. Oh, God. Could see time. Two brothers came to our church. They are members of our church that time. It was a brother that first came to see me. So I want to start a business, a dry cleaning business. I have so and so amount of money. But this, my friend, a fellow Christian brother in our church, said he has experience, so I want to put him in charge of my business. I said, bro, he said, sir, what will be his position in that business? Define it now. What will be the sharing policy? And all these things, I read it in books, Neil. But I just love, I love the people I pastor. That when I see you making mistake, I used to feel, if it's not too much, I should take money. Take back when I see my face, that's it. I called them in. That time my office was inside that mama, that place that there's a small toilet. Please, both of you should see a lawyer. Discuss your sharing policy. Let a lawyer put it on paper. Who is this man in this business? He said, Papa, we are the same brothers and sisters. We are brothers. So, brother, I will go office. Brother, I will go to my need from the cleaner. Brother, I will go to publicity. When he came back in about four months' time, he got to the shop. He didn't know. The person there, the cashier, didn't know him. Who are you? He said, I want to check your books. He said, you are not my boss. You are not my boss. By the time he called his friend, Lavaja, my boy, he'll be buying the more answer. 
ki lo nsele ah olohun ti gbe lomi si be oni de e kan le ma ba chin sinu business be en now ah en lori owo ah e wo e wo e wo e kan le e je carry am asoro igba kan gbe oro yen de waju mi e mo kan ti brother ti o ni owo ti o ni nkan kan tun ma so oni so pe o lo de ni o ma so nwe fun oni papa e je ki san balance e ye to ba wu to lo fi establish business business e ti boom they, he has bought even big gen. Only man somewhere for ah, mobile on one lady take it. Eti gagbe ni sa brother. Ile eton fe somwe yin fun yin. E yin le mani business. Mwa somfun yin. E ni to mani business mali. Only sa on kolo ni business. On lo on grow business yin. Only but on lo logo. On lo ni vision. Only sa on lo on grow business. And you know, you know how members be. He, got to, he wanted to be rude to me. Ah, I say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know what? Uh, brother, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The only thing, to only be here, is to be business. You cannot afford to be careless. A brother is dating you. Como é lovely, 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 family. This is my fiance. Oh, ma, oh, ma, palili. If we say we look like we told the team that we did the away, you are just careless because he's speaking in tongues. Don't do that. You cannot afford to be careless. Is somebody hearing me? Now I go back to that Oxford Dictionary translation. Is it translation we call it? You will understand. That you must be so cautious that you cannot afford to make a mistake. I always share it too with couples. Your wife has her own personal account. She's not showing you. And you bought the family land in her name. You are a fool. Ah, all I can't tell you, my own delete book a lot. Oh, that lot, con con. If you want to have a family, you call uh, Mrs. Mrs. Funke Agbaviaka. I love you, oh my God. But you love you too much. To live here, can't it here, huh? You are not too much. You are You too. Common sense should begin to tell you that, oh, Benny, you have to be wise. Anything you are write it in the name of Mr. Agbaviaka. To be wise. You have to be wise. You have to be wise. Listen, I have handled cases, eh? but I, I can't tell you now. Because if I tell you now, it will look as if I'm opening up some things that should not be opened. The Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. We'll continue tomorrow. So tomorrow we are going to look at our own weapon to conquer him. Rise up, rise up. We have